My name is Adinda Wilkista, here for BIT 4201, Human Computer Interaction. We'll have a recap uh, from our last week's class, where we looked at what human computer interaction is. And we said that it is the study of how computer users and the computer interact. We all know very well that the computers do not have a language, a common language, with uh, the computer users. They do not have uh, a way on which they can uh, interact, on which they can uh, communicate. So human-computer interaction through an interface brings uh, that space on how human uh, computer users and the computer can, have, uh, you know, can interact, can communicate. And that is what we are recapping from our last week's class. We will also look at uh, psychological factors of uh, HCI. And uh, in our last week's group discussions, we looked at the first time when you are interacting with the computers, that's first, the very first day when you are given a computer and you are asked to use it. What are some of the feelings? What are some of the things that came about in uh, your mind? And uh, we, look, we, uh, we uh, got some of the things from uh, you. One of them uh, was a fear of unknown. People feared you are given a computer and you don't know whether it is going to blow out on you. You don't know whether it is going to uh, just uh, maybe interfere with your eyes. You didn't know whether it is going to be well once you start working with the computers. And uh, we said that all that put together is uh, tech, it's called technophobia. One of the psychological factors of uh, human-computer interaction is uh, technophobia, where people fear, fear of unknown, where there's an anxiety, where there's excitement. Some of you just get excited. The first day when, you want to, when you're given a computer you use, to use, uh, you're very excited. You thought from that day on, you'll be a computer expert. Some were, uh, 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 you know, there was anxiety. You didn't know what next. If I pressed this uh, button, what will happen? That is uh, technophobia. Then we also looked at user-friendly. Because computers made your things, you know, you're working very fast. Computer makes, make, made uh, your life very easy. So it became user friendly. It became like a friend, like a partner to you. Another thing was providing shortcuts, those for experts, for those who had already learned computer packages. You didn't have to go through the long process when you want to save. You just click on, uh, you know, the shortcuts so that you save uh, your work. So those are some of the uh, technological factors that come along uh, with the HCI. Then we move on to an interface. We had earlier talked about an interface and we said it is what brings that closeness. It's what brings that, you know, that link that makes you, the computer user, and the computer interact. It brings that communication uh, space. It brings that link between you and uh, the computer uh, between you and uh, the computer. We w went ahead and looked at improving human-computer interactions because we already know now what are some of the good things, those, I mean, some of the good things that, that human-computer interaction brings to us. So how do we improve it? How do we improve it? Some of the things to use uh, in improving HCI are use of command structures uh, and menus. For example, what we have here, uh, when you go to the menu bars, you want to save a document, you just go to file, save, and uh, you go through. You want to go to edit your document, just click on edit, and then you move on. You go to in view, uh, it will give you a pop-up menu, and you work out your ways uh, through very fast. You go to insert, you want to insert maybe a button or something, just go to insert, and then a uh, uh, pop-up menu will come up, and then uh, it makes your life easier. So using of commands, structures, and menus will make your work very fast. Then uh, we also have uh, screen designs. Of course, when designing a screen design uh, for HCI, remember it is HCI that makes interaction between the computer user and uh, the computer. So some of the things uh, to make it improve is the screen designs, which when designing that screen design, they put you, the computer user, in control. They make you, remember the computer uses artificial intelligence. It is not intelligent. It is uses uh, your intelligence. So they make you, the computer user, be in control and not the computer to control you. So it is you to give the commands. It is you to give the instructions to the computer. And that is why we say 
put the user in uh, control as they design that screen design which you'll use as a computer user to interact with uh, the computer. Then you make the designs consistent. We want a flow of information when you're working with your computer. We want some consistency so that there's that flow of your information. And that is why we say as the design, the screen design is being made, there is made, I mean, you, you, you make it consistent. Then make mistakes, I mean, user, use, user mistakes should be easily rectified. User mistakes should be easily rectified. We want a situation where as a use, computer user, you work freely with the computer. Your computer becomes uh, your friend in the sense that if there's any mistake, you know very well at the back of your mind that you can still undo, you can still redo and still go on with your work, but not deleting everything because there's a mistake. We want a situation where at the back of your mind, you know that as I'm working with my computer, which is my friend, which we communicate with and we understand each other well. If there's a problem anywhere, I'll still go back. I will redo. I will still go back and rectify and pick up from where I made the mistake and continue moving. Then error messages. We want a design where, I mean, a computer design where there is a you know, error mis messages. Of course, some of the error messages can be very infuriating. Some of them um, can be very boring. Some of them can just put you off. So we want a situation where when working with your computers and a mistake happens or an error comes, then uh, the computer should be in a position of giving you an error message which will guide you on what to do next, which will give you you know, a way on how to sort out the problem and continue working. Not boring messages uh, or messages which don't even tell you where to go next. For example, we look at what we have uh, on the screen. An error message comes, sorry, Windows 95 was unable to comply with the go to hell command you specified. What next? As a computer user, let's talk about uh, a naive or uh, I mean, uh, 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 someone, a student who's just started working with the computer. This can be very boring. This can be very infuriating. Let's have another example um, of an error message. The instructions at this referenced memory at that, the memory could not be read. Then you are told click on OK to terminate the application or click on cancel. To debug the application that gives you a direction you know if I click on OK it will take me somewhere if I click on cancel it will take me somewhere there's also another error message that I want us to look at um, uh, where the computer tells you an error some sort of an error how do you know some sort of an error if it doesn't give you a, a, I mean a direction if it doesn't guide you how will you know the, I mean, to, how will you know how to sort out an error? I mean, uh, such like errors. You not know how to sort out such like errors. Then we also move on to availability of help. We want a screen design which will give you that availability of help facility. If there's a problem, then you know where to click so that you get to know what to do next or how to move on from where you are, from where you are. Let's look at the features of a good uh, HCI. Features of a good uh, HCI. Number one is online help facility. A good user computer, I mean a good user, I mean a good HCI will give you that help facility in the sense that if there's a problem somewhere, you know where to go and where to get help. For example, what we have uh, on the screens, what would you like to do? Then you look at what we have here and choose according to where or what you want. Or you type what you want to search or it will even give you options on, uh, you know, which will guide you on what to do next as uh, a student. Uh, another feature is multitasking. Multitasking capabilities. Uh, as students, when you come to the lab, sometimes I see as I teach, some are browsing, some are playing games, uh, you know, a lot of things. 
at the same time you want to concentrate and listen to what the lecturer is trying to say that is multitasking we want a computer that gives you that capability you are here listening to the lectures uh, in case you don't get anything you go to the internet search you know look at it and then verify so that whatever the lecturer is saying whatever you don't get if, it, if you don't want to carry up your hand so that i clarify for you you are there with the computer searching you know uh, getting everything so that by the time you finish up the class you have all that you are supposed to be getting from the class we want such like computer i mean such like interfaces we want like such like interfaces that will give you uh, an online online help facility so that if you're stuck somewhere you don't have to call a technician or give a call to someone to clarify or to give you know uh, make you uh, you know give you that help the computer or the interface that you have uh, should be in a position to give you that help facility like what we have uh, on the screen and multitasking we have already said uh, gives you the capability of doing many jobs many activities at the same time on the screen uh, of uh, your computer then we have the chapter questions or review questions chapter review questions which you can look at later after uh, the class one of them is describe three of the features of uh, a sophisticated user interface that makes it easy for a novice user or computer user to use number two is describe three features of a sophisticated um, user interface that makes it quick for an experienced user. Number three is give three psychological factors uh, which governs how people interact with uh, computer systems. And number four is what are the factors uh, uh, you'll need to make into account when designing a screen layout for a database application and that will wind up at i mean the topic which we've been looking at let's move on to user uh, the next topic which is user interaction design user interaction design user interaction design remember hci is all about the computer user and uh, the computer interacting communicating working together you giving the computer commands instructions and the computer replying to you like it is listening to your language like you have a common uh, language uh, to communicate so under user interaction design we look at the best way that we will work with this computer as the computer user so that it gives you maximum usability so that you get like a hundred percent of what you wanted to get as you are using your computer so the goal of interaction design is uh, to design for maximum uh, usability to design for maximum usability so that as you work with your computer it gives you the best as you communicate with your computer you get the whole of it as you work with your computer you get the fullness of working with it of course design rules must be put in place which will be followed in order to increase the maximum usability that we are talking out uh, we are talking about here with your computer or uh, your system of course uh, the design rules there is i mean the design rules will come with the standards with the principles and the guidelines that must be put in consideration for you to achieve that maximum usability because you are not just going to use your computer the way you want computers must be maintained computers must be taken good care of so there must be rules there must be standards there must be principles which you have to follow when you're working with your computer then we move on uh, to usability principles we move on uh, to usability principles they're divided into three we have learnability flexibility and uh, robustness the learnability flexibility and uh, robustness we'll start with the learnability of course for you to achieve that maximum usability your interface remember the interface is that is what gives us uh, you know the communication link between you the computer user and uh, the computer which is the system it is what brings the link so under usability principle learnability means that that interface must be easy to learn must be quick for you as the computer student i mean as the student
to, uh, to, know, to get what it wants you to do very fast. Once you're given its manual and you are to work with it, go through it very fast and it should be understandable. It should be made simple in a sense that you, the computer student, even if it's your first time to work with the computers, you learn and work with it very, very fast. Then we go to flexibility. You know that ICT is very dynamic. It keeps on changing year in, year out. New technologies, new ideas, new information. It's all over. You wake up today, tomorrow, whatever you got yesterday, as information of, uh, in ICT is different. There's a lot of information flooding on our social media, on our researches, so many. So you are not going to have something that is static and cling on it and then leave the new technologies, the new ideas that keeps on flooding our society, our schools, our world, year in, year out. So we want one that is, I mean, a, an interface that is flexible, that when a new technology comes, you just incorporate it. When a new idea comes, you just update it. It incorporates, it, up, you know, it takes in every new thing, every new technology that comes along the way because it, it will be or it should be flexible. Then we have uh, robustness, which looks at the level of support provided uh, to the user in determining successful achievements and assessment of goal uh, directed uh, behavior. So that will bring the end uh, of our class today and uh, to be continued next week. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Hello, I'm uh, Raymond Wafulangus, Associate Professor in the Department of IT uh, within the School of Computing and Informatics. Uh, today we'll t talk about logistics information systems and uh, just to give an overview, we'll look at the uh, re recap of uh, the previous lesson, which was in lesson nine, logistics information We'll look at the management of logistics information and uh, summarize and uh, we'll have a small class exercise after that. Um, now logistics, previously, in the previous lesson we saw that logistics is the process of planning, executing uh, the efficient transportation, storage and uh, management of the flow of goods from the point of origin to the point of consumption in order to meet the requirements of customers or organizations. Now, uh, as you are aware, there are goods uh, which are uh, brought into the country are held in a, a, a port, and then from there they are transported inland in a certain manner. And uh, all that uh, process generates information, as we'll see. And uh, now the term logistics, how did it start? It started in 1846 from uh, the French uh, word log logistique, which was coined by a military officer called Antoine Henri Jomini. The term was derived from the French logis, which means lodging. And uh, the officers who were in charge of uh, of, of uh, the provisions that were necessary for f functioning of the army are the ones who are called logistical officers. So logistical officers, uh, logistics and logistical uh, uh, operations have been associated with military activities, okay, concerning the deployment and ongoing support of a nation's uh, armed forces in line with the laid down military strategy and tactics. So logistics involves seven R's. That is getting the right product in the right quantity, in the right condition, at the right place, and at the, uh, at the right time, to the right customer, and at the right price. These are seven R's of logistics. Right product, right quantity, right condition, right place, right time, 
right customer and right price in that order now logistics activities are basically two there is inbound logistics and outbound logistics inbound logistics you can imagine uh, this one is going uh, into uh, the place where it is supposed to be used the goods are moving into the place where they are supposed to be used and outbound it means they are being dispatched from the factory now inbound logistics is generally understood to be uh, the sourcing expediting and receiving of goods that come into or are delivered to the business organization conversely outbound logistics is all about uh, warehousing packaging transporting of goods going out of or dis uh, dispatched from the organization like for example from a factory to where they are supposed to be utilized or 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 uh, or, or uh, uh, consumed. Since the goal of logistics is to meet customer requirements in a timely, cost-effective, and efficient manner, uh, there are many uh, organizations that uh, one can think of. For example, FedEx, UPS, DHL, G4S, Wells Fargo, and so on. These are well-known logistics uh, providers. There are also various logistical companies operating in our airports. We can see there are so many uh, companies, clearing and forwarding companies in the airports, seaport, inland port, and so on. Okay? Some logistics companies are related uh, in, package, in packing and moving services, courier services, and so on. Then, uh, right now, because we are going through uh, a stage whereby uh, the medical officers uh, medical personnel need a lot of uh, equipment. There is also uh, Kenya Medical Supplies Authority, uh, the KEMSA, which is specialized in uh, medical logistics. Uh, as you know, right now the, the, uh, the, there is a, the global pandemic and they need a lot of logistical support in terms of drugs, medical supplies, and so on. Now, logistics has uh, several components which we can talk about. There is in, inbound transportation, there is outbound transportation, uh, fleet management, the management of the vehicles and uh, the, all, 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 the, all the trucks that, uh, uh, that transport goods from point to point, then warehousing where the goods are kept for, for some time, then materials handling, materials handling, order fulfillment, inventory management, and then demand planning. Now, logistics is an information-based process. That means there is a lot of information that is generated and consumed. Uh, and it's an information-based process of ma material movement across the supply chain. Now, con in order to confirm to the various uh, intricacies of logistic processes normally uh, this uh, normally consumes and generates considerable amount of information for better and more efficient coordination of the logistics activities uh, information has to be managed at all times now there are various components of a logistics uh, system which manages that information that is is handled during logistics. Uh, as you can see, there are so many. Uh, we, uh, there is, a, for example, inventory management, transportation, storage and hand handling of materials, packaging, information processing, demand forecasting, uh, purchasing, uh, fa uh, facility location, production planning, and many other activities, including customer service. Now, in the management of logistics information, there are, sem there are se several uh, uh, factors that are involved, and uh, logistics information systems are therefore uh, expected to do the following, to provide information on goods delivery and dispatch. That is the basic, uh, 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 the basic 
factor that is, that is, that is uh, considered provision of information on goods, delivery, and dispatch. Okay? Then they, they follow or track their de delivery path. We have tracking mechanisms, the way bill numbers, and so on, uh, or uh, the, the numbers that are used to track on the, uh, online. Then monitoring progress and status in the, and the influence of changes in the purchasing, production, and so on. Then organizing warehousing of goods. How will the goods be packaged and how will they be uh, stored in, a, in an efficient manner? Then performing related financial and accounting as, as well as model logistics process and their information flows. Uh, the, here is an illustration of uh, vehicles dropping or picking items in a, in a logistics organization. Then uh, as, they, as they deliver, the, there's monitoring performance management system, then vehicle dispatch planning system, and all this is uh, controlled with a logistics database in the background and it provides external system interface and so on. So there's an, uh, a, a well-coordinated information system there. Now, in summary, uh, we have looked at uh, uh, logistics activities that are, that are, uh, uh, the, that exist, then Inbound and outbound logistics. We have looked at the seven R's of logistics, the components of a logistic system, then management of logistics information. In the next lesson, we expect to cover information systems for the management of logistics activities. Now, there is a small activity that uh, in parting we would like to, we would like you as students to do. Uh, the first thing is uh, you try to explore how a local farm you may be aware of in your, lo in your, in your locality uh, generally carries out its logistics operations. Then, once you have done that, how, ask yourself, how does the organization input process and output information, okay? Then, once you have done that, look at the role that information technology plays in facilitating the processing, transmission, and sharing of information by the organization concerned. With that, it, we come to the end of this lesson. Thank you for you, your attention. Televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.